Booyah! Hey guys, welcome to my first TF2 comparison in a while. To be honest, I, I didn't make any for a very long time because I got very bored of making them because they can get very, very, very repetitive. But I feel like it's far more proactive to actually just take some older videos that I already made and remake them a lot better because I think my current ones kind of suck. Anyway, the first one in this list I want to redo is the melee weapons because I did one only covering two out of the six and I got a lot of flack over that. that people wanted to talk about the discipl disciplinary action and all the other ones. So... I'm going to go over them right now. Now the first thing I should bring up is that I'm not going to go over the skins or the Malkin Gardener. The skins for a very simple reason, because they're reskins, why would you want to talk about the exact same weapon with a different skin? And the Malkin Gardener is because the only difference with the Malkin Gardener is you hit a guy with Airborne and it actually has no gameplay related advantages. It just, it just has a trick shot based kill. That's kind of it. it I, I don't think it's really different enough to compare it on the level I'm going to compare the rest of the weapons. Although it is very much a fun weapon to use on a regular basis. Anyway, on to the video. The first one on the list is the escape plan. Now, I fucking love the escape plan for a few reasons. The biggest one being that it is the way to get out if you are by yourself pubbing or just playing as a really solo kind of class as soldier. It is the, it is the weapon that you use when you're by yourself. It is a weapon that you very much focus on because it is the way to stay along as long as possible. It actually dramatically increases your survivability if you know how to use it properly. I.e. if you're low on health, you just fucking grab it straight out and run for your goddamn life before shit gets real. That's how you stay alive with the escape plan, and it really does make it so that you are a lot better. It makes it so you can fight for another day. People don't seem to see the point in running away, but in actual fact, running away is one of the most tactical ways of playing this game. Because yes, offensive attacks are great and all, but if you run away when you're low health and come back when you're full health, you're far more likely to get more kills and then not die yourself. It, people seem to just ignore the idea of running away, but in a tactical perspective, it actually works much better overall. So for that reason, I fucking love the Equalizer. It is the solo weapon to have. Roamers in, in sixes always use it because it is their way out. Because they are the offensive class that starts off a lot of the pushes by forcing the medic, and they need, and if they can, that is their way out because they they can be low health, pop it out, and run for their fucking lives. It is the best weapon, in my opinion, for solo soldiers. If you're just playing with no medic on you or anything, just playing by yourself. And if you want to play like that, then the escape plan is perfect for you. The next one on the list is the pain train. Now the pain train, I don't know. It, I really don't know what to say about it because it is a very interesting weapon. Where basically the way it works is that you get a plus ten percent damage from everything, but you have like a plus one objective to everything. So like if you go, you basically have the objective speed of scouts, which is very nice in a lot of situations. And in fact, a lot of pocket soldiers back in the day used this thing almost exclusively. Demo men still kind of use it exclusively because it, it is very useful to have certain offensive classes be able to cap twice as fast if they need to. And the fact was in sixes back in that day, the biggest, the only issue to do with the bullet damage was kind of scouts. I mean, I think it was damage from everything for a while, but even then, the main issue was scouts and demo men and sollies were the main damage apart from that, and they they didn't really change anything to the pain train. So mostly people used it if their scouts were very offensive players and died a lot, and they needed they still needed someone with times two objective speed to actually still take the objectives. It's still very good in payload because the max the max people allowed on on a payload thing before it stops getting any faster is three. So that that makes you two thirds of a push if you're a demo or a solly. So if you want to stick to the carrot or you want to play a more defensive play, taking the objectives while everyone else does the work, then the pain train definitely works. And no, the plus 10% damage from everything actually isn't that bad. You, be, you, you think it's pretty awful, but you barely notice it a lot of the time. The next one in this is the disciplinary action. Now, the disciplinary action works in a way that if you hit your teammates, it makes it so that you go faster the more you hit them. I think it stacks to about four or five hits and then it just stays perpetually until you stop hitting people. But this is the team weapon. While focusing on the best solo weapon being the escape plan, the best team weapon in my opinion is the disciplinary action. Because the disciplinary action is used almost exclusively by soldiers in Highlander for a very good reason. Because it makes it so that the classes that are very very slow, as well as you who mightn't have the loadout requirements for gunboats, i.e. you want to use different weapons instead, this makes it so that you're kind of fast regardless. And you can make heavies, medics, classes that are traditionally very slow and very have to be the front of battle anyway, makes them a lot faster. It makes it a lot more capable to be in the front of battle 
at a far quicker pace. For that reason, this is the best support melee weapon in my opinion. I think it's a very very good support weapon. It works in a way that you can support all of your teammates while still having a lot of offensive power yourself. You're not really held back by any damage debuffs because it's actually quite an effective weapon just for helping out teammates. And I really personally really enjoy using the weapon if I'm playing soldier with a bunch of other people because the speed boost really does help classes such as heavies. Next one on the list is the equalizer. Now I was a little bit harsh on the equalizer in my last video in saying that basically the way it works is that when if you hit so if you lose health the damage on the equalizer stacks to uh, up to a point where it's basically a lethal no matter what you do. In saying this, this weapon is actually amazing if you want to cut follow, uh, well, as I call it in the original video, the fight or flight response, where either one, you run for your fucking life and try to survive another day, or two, you take them on head on. Both work in certain situations, but only the either melee weapon supports one of them. Like, for example, you kind of need to have the escape plan to run away and you kind of need the equalizer in order to play this ridiculously crazy offensive shit with the possibility of not dying. Because while the escape plan makes you marked for death and makes it far more likely that you will die if you're not fast enough, the equalizer is more like a kind of a kamikaze thing where if you don't die, all the better for you. But if you do die, pretty much everyone dies in the- pretty much everyone else involved with you dies in the process because one hit from your axe and you're pretty much always dead. And that, for that reason, it's one of the best offensive melee weapons. It's very, very good for full offensive play where you're not afraid of hitting people straight in the face where you have a pocket medic on you and you just want to go straight into them. Back in the day, the equalizer was amazing for another reason, which was that you could, if you had the rocket jumper out, you could use taunt, which, which was the grenade, which made everyone near to by you explode. That didn't damage you, so that was also a plus, but then they, they nerfed that like two years ago, three years ago. So since then, it's purely been a great offensive run at everything and do as much damage as they can weapon. The last one, excluding the Maka Gardener for already explained reasons, is the Half Satoichi. Now, the Half Satoichi is kind of a weird weapon to me. I don't like it, mostly because I always forget that you can't take it away when you take it out. So you have to basically be sure that you have a kill. And if you don't, you're probably going to die yourself at a later time. Basically, this weapon is a kind of, I've confirmed the kill, I'm probably going to get this kill, so I'll take out the Half Satoichi and get my health back in the process. It's it's a very good conservative weapon if you're able to use it properly. I personally cannot use it properly. I will just run straight into the face of battle, probably die, and then wonder why the hell I even used it because I'm never able to use it one in the right time or two. I like flicking my weapons around sometimes and I always just forget that I have it out and then it just sticks there and I'm like, oh shit. You either have to go back to the resub or die and both of those aren't very pleasant alternatives. So in saying that, I personally don't like the Asatoichi for the soldier, but it is a great sustained weapon and people are very good with it that I've seen before who use it at the right time to make sure that they survive a lot longer. It is probably the best sustained weapon if you're able to use it properly, but if you're not, it is really, really awkward. I hope you enjoyed that and I also hope that Valve won't make another update changing everything again because my god, every single time I make one of these, it's Murphy's Law, I fucking, a new one always fucking comes out, and I feel like shit again, because I have to update it again. To be honest, I don't mind that, but it can be kind of annoying at times. Anyway, it doesn't matter. What does matter is that I am making a Q&A soon enough. I'm planning on making it for my 1000 subscriber special maybe, or maybe earlier if I feel like it. So, if you have questions for me for a Q&A video, put it in the comments. I'm, I will gladly answer them in this Q&A video. That will be within the next few weeks. Anyway, I'll see you next time, and have a nice day.